Hello everyone, I'm Taseem Sheikh from Varodra, Gujarat, India. Okay, so I am a chemistry tutor teaching to the students of 11th, 12th and the college standards the subject of chemistry. I have done my graduation and my master's both in the chemistry from MSU Varodra, that is the Maharaja Sayajira University of Varodra. I am in this education field since last uh, more than six years and Urban Pro has served as a very good platform for me to get in touch with the different students students from different locality, from different locations. Uh, like it's very good platform where students can also contact the teachers. And there are several students who have contacted me during my span uh, of this teaching. And I overall approximately 15 to 20 students, I have given the coaching through the Urban Pro platform. And with, uh, especially at the times of COVID, Urban Pro came up with very good collaboration with the Zoom. You know, wherein we can schedule the online classes and that became Came a boon for me because uh, online classes was the requirement during the times of COVID. I got students from abroad through Urban Pro platform and I have to give them online coaching and when the Urban Pro collaborated it was a very good opportunity for me and several of the uh, like problems were solved additionally uh, like uh, there are a student and teachers for both of them this platform serves a very good uh, where you can contact them solve their queries ask your several questions talking about like my teaching so how do we stand i stand out from the others see teaching is not uh, that simple okay when we are talking about students concepts may remain the same but how a student can pick up that concept because every student is not same every student's frequency is not same so uh, we have to tune up with the frequency of each student we have to modify the way we teach a particular concept to every student and that's how it's make my te uh, teaching technique unique from the others because i analyze the student i identify what is his way what how does he thinks in what way he will understand better you know so the concepts of chemistry that will remain the same but how i explain to each student will be different different depending on the students uh, thinking the students capacity its frequency so i tune up with the frequency of the student and accordingly i modify my teaching strategy so that you know everything goes well with the student and he can grabs the maximum of the concept of chemistry and today we are over here in this video to discuss on the concept of hybridization different types of hybridization and the shapes of various hybrid orbitals okay guys so and this video is made in collaboration with the urbanpro.com so guys, as I told you, the topics for today will be hybridization, its types and the shapes of different, different types of hybrid orbitals. Let's begin. Hybridization. This word we encounter several times while dealing in the chemistry, especially, you know, when we have to draw certain shapes or the structures of uh, certain compounds, then we have to deal like what will be the hybridization, what will be its structure. Okay, so moving into that, we all know there are four different types of orbitals. Okay, S orbital, P orbital, D orbital, and F orbital. Now, how are they different from each other? Why do we call them different? Okay, so it's the shape which makes them different from one another. As you can see on the screen, the S orbital has a spherical shape which is centered at the uh, midpoint of the three axis, origin of the three axis. P has a dumbbell shape, which will lie on either of the axis, depending on whether it is a Px orbital, Py orbital, or the Pz orbital. On the image, as we see, it's a Pz orbital with a dumbbell shape centered around the z-axis and lying along the z-axis. The d orbital, which is a double dumbbell shape, there are five types of d orbitals, dxy, dyz, dzx, dx square minus y square, and dz square. So these three, uh, all the five, they will have a dumbbell shape, but the way they are oriented or aligned in the three dimensions are different and hence the different names. So as you can see on the screen, this is a dub, uh, double dumbbell shape of the d. And talking about the F orbital, the shape of the F orbital has not yet been confirmed. Okay, 
So now the question is, why do we need hybridization or why do we actually have to discuss or uh, deal with the concept something called hybridization? So what happens, see, when elements are combining to form the compounds, okay, so different elements like two or more than two, three, four, different elements when they combine together to form compounds, they form the bonds using the valence orbital, okay. Now the valence orbitals may or may not be the same. And when we say the valence orbitals are not same, then their energy levels will also be slightly different. And when we talk about like the energy levels are slightly different, and the forming of bond, you know, the bond formation becomes a little bit of difficult. Like it's not that easy to combine different energy level orbitals together. Okay. But compounds exist in the nature. There are different compounds in the stable form. That means bond formation is taking place. So how? Okay. All these questions get answered by the concept of hybridization. So it was the scientist Pauling who gave this concept of hybridization. It's actually a phenomenon wherein different atomic orbitals, which have a slightly different energy levels, will combine and result in a completely new set of orbitals. And this new set of orbitals will be similar in shape and similar in energy. Okay. So this helps in making a bond with another element. Fine. So hybridization is nothing but wherein different atomic orbitals combine with each other and gives you a set of orbitals. The new set of orbitals, which is also known as hybrid orbitals, are similar in shape and similar in energies. Okay. So what happens before an element undergoes like forming a compound, first of all, it undergoes hybridization, wherein the valence orbitals of that element will un, uh, combine, result into the set of hybrid orbitals. And then these hybrid orbitals will form bonds with the different element, resulting in the formation of different compounds. Okay, now let us move on to the different types of hybridization. See, there is uh, very simple, the types of hybridization, it's very simple to identify from their names and uh, from the type of orbitals. So as we discussed, like there are S, P, D, and F, four different type of orbitals. Depending on which orbitals are getting involved in the hybridization, accordingly, the types of hybridization are classified. For example, let us take S, P. Okay, so we say sp hybridization when when there is one s and one p orbital combining together and forming sp. Similarly, if we talk about sp three d, okay, so there is one s orbital, three p orbitals, and one d orbital. So total five orbitals are combining together and uh, undergoing the hybridization. So simple is the types of hybridization. As simple are their symbols. The symbols directly helps to understand and indirectly gives an indication like what orbitals are involved and how many number of orbitals are involved. So if you can see on the screen, like I have taken an example of sp3d2 hybridization. These letters s, p, and d, they directly represent the type of orbitals which are involved in the hybridization. Okay, so what we can say here, here s, P and D orbitals are involved in the hybridization. Now the question is how many number? So the number which is raised as a power to the letter that tells you how many orbitals are involved. So if we see, if nothing is written, that means it's one. So there is one S orbital involved over here. P3 means there are three P orbitals involved over here. And D2 means there are two d orbitals involved over here in the hybridization. Okay, so this is very simple to understand. The names and the symbols will directly give an indication what is the hybridization and how many orbitals are involved in this hybridization. Okay, so let us move further to the shapes of different types of 
hybrid uh, orbitals okay so as we see over here we have seen five different types one by one we will discuss in detail about the shapes of the different hybrid orbitals now before talking or before moving on to the shapes of hybrid orbitals see or we always should always remember the number of orbitals which are undergoing hybridization will give you the same number of hybrid orbitals. For example, if there are three orbitals undergoing the hybridization, then you will get three hybrid orbitals. If there are five orbitals undergoing hybridization, then you will get the five hybrid orbitals. Okay, now the uh, concept of the shape. See, uh, whenever we have this hybrid orbitals in the three dimension, huh? So they have, they are going to contain electrons in it. So all of them will be negatively charged. They try to keep themselves at maximum distance from one another in three dimension. And accordingly, they will take that shape. Okay, the idea you will be more clear when we uh, talk about the different shapes. So let us begin with the simplest of all, that is the sp hybrid orbitals. See, as the name suggests, there will be one s and one p orbital combining together and giving you sp hybrid orbitals. So as we have one s orbital and one p orbital, you will get two sp hybrid orbitals. See, we have two sp hybrid orbitals. Okay, so the way in which you know we can keep them the farthest distance from one another in the space will be when you have it in the linear shape. Okay, so when you have this linear shape at 180 degrees from each other, they will be at maximum distance and hence at maximum stability. So this gives sp hybrid orbitals a linear shape because arranging them at 180 degree will be at the maximum distance and hence they will have the maximum stability. So sp hybrid orbitals are having a linear shape. The compounds which can exhibit this kind of structure is the beryllium fluoride, beryllium hydride, C2H2, HgCl2. Okay, so I hope this clears about the shape of sp hybrid orbitals. Now let us move to the another one. The next one is sp2 hybrid orbitals. See as the name say, 1s and 2p orbitals are going to combine here. You will get resultant 3 hybrid orbitals. Okay, so there will be 3 sp2 hybrid orbitals. Now we have three hybrid orbitals. How we can keep them in this space so that you know they are at the maximum distance from one another and the most stable. So simply you have to keep them at 120 degree from each other. Okay so when they are at 120 degrees from each other in a planar structure they will be at maximum stability and this gives the sp2 hybrid orbitals a trigonal planar structure where the orbitals will have a bond angle of 120 degrees each. Okay, they all will be at the same bond angle, equidistant from each other. Examples of this are BF3 and C2H4. So these compounds exhibit sp2 hybridization. Now, the next one is sp3. See, as long you must be familiar, so I don't need to tell you that there is one S and three P orbitals combining together, and you are getting resultant four hybrid orbitals. Arranging these four hybrid orbitals in the three dimension, the best way in which they can be will be a tetrahedral structure like this. Okay, so a tetrahedral structure like this will make them at the most stable with a bond angle of 109.5 with each orbital, okay? And examples, compounds which exhibit sp3 hybridization are methane, ammonia, water, and several others, of course. Now, so this was about the hybridization which involves the s and p, only the s and the p orbitals. The number of p orbitals are different. Let us now move to the hybridization, which also involves the d orbitals. The first one, sp3d. Okay, so here, as you can see, there is one s orbital. Three p orbitals will be utilized and one d orbital. So total five orbitals and hence 
this results in the phi hybrid orbitals see the way in which we can arrange this phi hybrid orbitals in the three dimension is when you have three in the same plane okay so they will be arranged like this in the same plane this orbitals which are in the same plane are referred as the equatorial positions one orbital will lie at the top vertically and the fifth one will lie vertically downside like this okay so this way they will be at the maximum distance from one another and in the most stable form the one which are vertical they are referred as the axial orbitals and the one which are the three which are in the same plane are referred as the equatorial now the bond angle between the equatorial will be 120 degrees since they will be in a triangular shape in the same plane and the bond angle between the equatorial and axial will be 90 degrees so they will be at right angle to each other and examples of compounds which uh, shows the sp3 dehybridization of pcl5 icl3 xco2f2 then an xe fluoride etc 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 and uh, the last hybridization for the today's video sp3d2 wherein now 1s 3p orbitals and 2d orbitals will come by so we have resultant six hybrid orbitals now here four hybrid orbitals will be in the same plane okay so earlier in the case of sp3d we had three hybrid orbitals in the same plane here we will be having four hybrid orbitals in the same plane like this and one will be at the top the sixth the last one will be at the bottom okay so this gives it an octahedral structure now here the bond angle between each orbital the one more which are at equatorial the one at the axial will be same that is 90 degrees so all of the hybrid orbitals this is all the six hybrid orbitals will be at 90 degrees to each other and of course, the examples falling in this category is SF6, ICL5 and XCF4. Thank you for watching this video over here. I hope this video will help you in clearing your concepts about hybridization, the types of hybridization and the shapes of the different hybrid orbitals. And if you like my video, do check my profile on Urban Pro. You can also check my reviews on the Urban Pro. Okay. And anytime, please reach out to me. I will be happy to help. Thank you so much.